The idea behind today's session is to really do an overview of the project from the standpoint of you, the operator, what can you get out of it? The project itself covers a lot of bases, and we're not actually going to even go through all of those things today. What we want to do is get you excited about what this opportunity is and what, what we're trying to create for this region. With the idea that we'll show you the fun stuff today. Over the summer, we're going to be doing a lot of work one-on-one -on -one with you, calling you, wanting to understand your business, understand what is Chinook Country, what do we have to offer, where's the opportunities for us. And then in the fall, we're going to be offering a number of workshops that I encourage you all to attend. In fact, if you sign up to be a part of this project, you'll be required to attend a certain amount of training. And the reason that we're doing this is we really want to understand what it is we're doing before we come back to you and say, okay, here's how you can best succeed in this project. We cannot do this without you. We can build a great website, we can provide all sorts of training, but at the end of the day, you are the ones who actually deliver the experiences that our tourists come here for. And you are the key to the puzzle and you're the key to success. So we need you to be a strong partner in this and we need to make sure that this works for you, okay? So that being said, uh, there's really three things that we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the Explorer Quotient, which for some of you will be a refresher. This is a very powerful tool that the Canadian Tourism Commission has given to us to help us understand who our customers are and also look at the experiences we provide in Chinook Country based on who is most likely to want to have that experience. That's so key, right? We understand we can't be everything to everyone and nor should we. We need to know who we are, what we're best at doing, what that experience is, and then who is most likely to want to have that experience. Okay, so that's what the Explore Quotient is going to help us understand and it's, it's a lot of fun actually. I really enjoy working with the Explore Quotient and I think you will too. Second thing is we're going to talk about um, an online reservation system which is part of the new website that Chinook Country will be building. And again, for, for some of you in the audience, you're very familiar with this. For others, you might be thinking, holy cow, I can't even program my, I was going to say VCR, what's the other thing, PBR? <laughs> Shoot, I just got one, I don't know how to program it. But, um, you know, it's, it's not as intimidating as it might seem. And in fact, it's actually quite easy. And we've worked really hard and done a lot of research to find the right company to help us do this. Uh, the company that we're working with, and Nicholas will speak to them a little more later, is recognized as one of the best in North America. And they provide tremendous support, and they're very exciting. And so I want you again to look at this and say, geez, have I ever thought about how much easier would it be for my customer if they could just go to the website and click purchase and buy my tickets, my rooms, my festival tickets, my restaurant passes, whatever it is that you sell. And the key to that is that we have to make it easy for the customer, right? This is what this project's all about. The third thing is to really look at how do we do this together? Because as I said at the start, no one of us can do this project on our own. It's about collectively as a region saying, here's what we have to offer to the people who want it, and here's where you can buy it in a way that they want to buy it, okay? You're all here, I think, because you get it. You get that partnership works, and you get that working together makes us all stronger. So this project really, we're reaching out to the far corners of every part of our region. We're reaching out to not just tourism providers like yourselves, but to economic development people and planning commission people and people who are involved in tourism in many different ways so that we all are on the same path and we all have the same vision of how can we collectively make our region the most successful, the most accessible and really an outstanding example of what tourism can be in Canada, in rural Canada. One of the things that we're going to talk about marketers, as tourism people, just, just as tourism people, we're selling experiences. We're not selling products. So the difference between what you saw here, which is really seeing a lot of places and buildings and so forth, it, with the exception of, of the people in the, in the bottom uh, one here, is in this one you see people actually having experiences. And they don't even have a product in there in a lot of cases, but you know that that's what, that's what the memories come from, right? The experiences are what endure. A travel product is something you buy. An experience is something that you remember. And what we're going to talk about is that the products are there to facilitate the, the experience. And the challenge is, how do you then put the products together 
so that as a group, because you know, you know, people don't come here just to go to one product, right? They, 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 they have several. So how do you cluster them all together so that people can have a really cool kick experience? So here's, a, here's, here's an example, for example, of, of now we're going to start talking about this thing called clustering, right? Clustering basically talks about people who are in basically the same geographic location getting together and working together and creating an entity that can be sold. Now that in, in, in our case, it could be a package, it could be an itinerary, it could be a trail, it could be all kinds of things, but it's different firms working together in order for them to create one experience. First of all, they said for visitors, the DMOs provide information viewed as less biased than content offered by for-profit entities. So for, from the visitor's point of view, they can go to the DMO's website and get a sense of everything that's there. And the intent of this project is to get all of the content, all of the products on there that is available in the region, as much as we can, uh, going with those who are willing to be there, but, but essentially get as much as we can. So from, and that's a really big key, uh, a key element of this project is that it's all about the consumer. The other interesting stuff from that is that 82% of the DMO users got their inf information from the DMO website. Now a DMO user in this study was defined as anybody who had visited a DMO website for any reason over the last 12 months. So it gave, th th that's how researchers look at things. 57% uh, of DMO users say that DMO sites influence their selection. And then the other really cool thing is that they keep going back. The last point here. Travelers visit DMO website at various phases of the travel process. So not only to plan the trip, but once they've booked it, they keep going back. So there's, there's a, a number of things that say why it's a win for tourism businesses. Obviously, it's going to increase product sales because one of the things that we're doing is we're taking this whole concept of improving the product through clustering and focusing on the tourism, uh, the, the actual traveler that we, we have targeted, but then we're going to actually sell it online. For a small business, okay, so what have you got on your plates? If you're, and I, I'm not just talking businesses, I'm talking historic sites, I'm talking anybody who's a nonprofit trying to deal with this. Everybody is stressed for time. Right? Administration is just something you don't need. What if we can take some of that away from you and then turn it into sales at the same time? What a great win proposition for you there. The other cool thing is, yes, this will, there will be commissions. I mean, you, this isn't going to happen for free, but essentially what happens is, well, actually, it is for free. <laughs> We're set up for free, but it incorporates in a commissionable product, right? So the commission goes back into the destination and is by, back into the destination's marketing organization. It's not going off to someone outside of, of the destination so that they could use it to increase their bottom line. It's coming back here so that marketing can be strengthened. This is actually a uh, Meridian slide and this is something that, that they've noticed just by using the online booking system. So the advantage is not only working together, creating packages around EQ, but when you add in the online sa uh, sales system, you start to see how that starts to multiply <coughs> and support sales. So first of all, while accommodation only bookings still outnumber package bookings, in, in this case, 60 to 40, and as we know with Tourism Ottawa, it actually turns out to be 50-50, which is kind of cool. Results indicate that packages continue to gain a sizable share of bookings. So packages sell, bottom line. Most impressively, in terms of, per in terms of performance, packages represent longer stays. That's important, isn't it? 2.6 nights versus 2.2 nights. And the other real cool statistic, higher expenditure. Uh, per booking, 337 versus 305, then just a regular accommodation only booking. These increases represent a 20% longer stay and 11% greater expenditure for booked packages. That's a great argument for what we're doing, at least to step into this and see where it goes. When we show them all the things there is to do, in some cases package it together, so it appeals to them or motivates them to think, you know, geez, I, I really like to do that. And if we can get them to purchase it, and as Mary was saying, once they purchase it and they know they're coming, they will come back to that website numerous times because they may find, well, what else can I do while I'm there? 
The importance of this is that the destination website, if it's done right, has all the experiences in one place for them to look at. And ultimately, with a couple of clicks, they can purchase those. And this is really important. So again, I'm going to reinforce the fact that we need every one of you, and I know some of you already sell online, but we still need you to come on board and make sure your product is represented there or your experience is represented there so that we can do a better job of marketing it and showing what a wonderful place this is. Unlike what we call OTAs or online travel agencies, <coughs> the DMO websites give you that flavor. OTAs are Expedia, Travelocity and hundreds of others. And they package the easy things, right? So they take things like airline, rental car, hotels, and they sell those things. But they don't tell you what you're going to experience when you're at that location unless you've either been there before or you've searched somewhere else, like a DMO website, to get a flavor of what else is in that region. So it's very, very important. This just gives you a sense. It's, it's called a common technological platform. So if we're driving the destination, and what all dynamic packaging means is that it's a way to allow the consumer to create their own package, all right? Because if we have services, dining, attractions, event ticketing, accommodations, content management, and events all on this one platform, it allows the consumer to go in and say, as Mary showed you in Ottawa, here's a package. It includes just two things. It included accommodations and it included a coupon book. But the attraction part was, which one of these do you want to take? Like, how, do you want to add these in? And it's really important that you need to be on here so that they can see you, so they can pick you. And one thing that each operator gets, all right, or each attraction or each event, is they will get their very own microsite. All right? Think of it as a new website for your business, community, attraction, event, hotel, or whatever, that is very you know, good at, you can put pictures on it, you're gonna put content on it, you put inventory in it, and every t so you can get all that statistical information as it relates to your microsite anytime you want. So what this means for you, again, very simply, it gives you the ability to showcase and sell your product, tickets, whatever it is, online to a broader base of customers than you, you, you may not be able to market to, regardless of how much money you have or don't, right? It converts interest into sales quicker, right? So what that really means is that when they're on a site and you give them the ability to buy, well, guess what? If they do buy it, we've just stopped something else from happening. We've stopped them from leaving, <laughs> right? And looking at other travel sites. And we also stop them from maybe choosing an alternate destination because they've purchased, right? They've made a commitment to come to this area and they've purchased something. And that happens quicker when the product and the sales are all aligned within one area, right? Then the converter to come in and continue to reference the DMO site uh, for more things to do. And this is where dining, shopping, and other aspects come into play because they may say, yeah, I'm coming for this museum or I'm coming for that festival. I'm staying here. What else can I do? Where should I eat? And in the sense, what that means is, as they book a package or add things to their shopping cart or add things to their list of things to do, when they get to certain plateaus, we can kick in something as simple as, say, a coupon book that we might be able to get for free or we can get a free lunch somewhere. And as those levels or plateaus raise, they continue to get more things given to them. And this really gets a lot more loyalty. That's kind of the, the frame, and you can see here in terms of the timing that we need to do that, that's kind of the steps that we have for this project. But beyond that, the project involves a steering committee that's made up of economic development people and planning people and tourism people, Duncan's on the steering committee, um, and there's a few others that were here earlier, that are going to help us look at this and say, okay, this is a really great thing we're doing. It's one piece of a much bigger long-term plan that we have to have for this region to be successful. So we're starting here. And by starting here, we're going to get everyone together and start talking about who are we and how do we work together, like Mary said. And then the next step is, okay, what do we do next to make sure we're always improving our value and just, again, being on top of what we have to do to be relevant to the consumer. So, all right. So that being said, you know, we're pretty excited about it. I was thrilled to hear the questions today and the variety of comments. I'm really looking forward to working with you all. And 
I'm hoping that you're going to sign those expression of interest forms and help us find other people who need to be a part of this project. So thank you all for coming. And if you do have any more questions, you're welcome to stay behind and, and chat with us. Yep.